Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review. It's Wednesday, it's the 17th of May. My name is Russell Shaw, I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM, and my email address is rshaw at fxm.com. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up our disclaimers. I'm going to start off with the high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on the screen for a few moments. Good morning, Zanetta. Thank you very much for joining. Much appreciated, and uh, thank you to everyone who has signed in this morning. It is always appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just keep this high-risk investment warning on for a few moments. All right, and here's our commentaries disclaimer. And um, our reference is market scope and trading view. And uh, I'm going to start off with a chart on trading view. I don't think we've ever looked at. It's the one month yield. Uh, it's very short term. We, we, we hardly ever look at this, but I just want to make a point here. Uh, you can see that the yield's jumping. We're, we're over 5.7% here. Um, this is a, a direct result of the uh, the debt ceiling. Um, the X date, the X date, when the Treasury uh, has estimated they may start running out of money to pay their obligations, 1st June. It's not written in stone. Uh, there's going to be um, leeway there, but... Uh, that's what uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has come out with in terms of the X date, and it's made these short-term bond uh, bonds almost untouchable. Nobody, nobody wants to touch them. So the prices are falling and the yields are jumping. Um, there is stress in the fixed income market, which we're not seeing really on the other markets just yet. I think we started seeing it yesterday um, because effectively there was a meeting yesterday. Uh, um, the meeting again came out with no deal, but uh, Joe Biden and congressional leaders said they were optimistic about a bipartisan deal. And um, they, the two sides have uh, still um, not really made anything, um, any head roads. Um, and they, re they remain apart. Uh, the meeting did yield agreement on a new system for staff level negotiations, whatever that may mean. But the point is, uh, there is stress. Uh, let's go through to the US two year yield. Let's just take a look there. Okay, you, you, you'll see that the, the stress is not, is not as apparent as it is on that short term. That short term showing a lot of stress. What I think that means is as we head towards that X date, there's going to be stress on the risk markets. Um, the risk markets have been perhaps a little complacent with regards to the uh, debt ceiling. It's almost as if they're saying, look, we've seen this uh, play out before. We're not too concerned. But uh, as long as these guys don't, uh, don't make a deal, uh, the pressure's going to build. So um, I just want to go back to that uh, one month. So you just put in US 01 MY, that's the one month. Yeah, you can see the, the stress here. You see the stresses here? This is the weekly, it's building. Okay. Um, what does that mean for us as traders? I want to go back to what we've been talking about for uh, this week. It's really been um, built around the US dollar. Uh, the reason that we... Um, or emphasizing the dollar here is because the dollar is a safe haven. We, we, we tend to start the analysis with the US dollar irregardless, but when it um, comes to a, um, a place where people want to uh, look for safety, uh, the US dollar certainly is right up there. And um, what's interesting to me is that uh, the support has uh, kicked in around that 17800 uh, a big button the 12800 level here and um if we go through to the the daily time frame we're in zone 1 okay we're in we're in zone 1 and um we've been looking at this ever since Ever since this, so th this this coincides with that one month stress, okay? Uh, the one month stress pushing up 
uh, on the so the dollars pushing up as people start looking for for safety. Then we saw some red. It's always good to see some red in zone one because that's the dip in the upswing. That's the dip in the upswing. So we noted, guys, here's the dip in the upswing. Keep an eye on the US dollar. Okay. And then um, we, um, yesterday was actually a bit tricky. Uh, I can't. Um, so we had a signal one, we had signal two. Uh, it whipsawed pretty early in the day, and then that's when it caught. And then what we said was, well, the stochastic's got to make its way through to the upper quintile and hold. If it gets through to the upper quintile and hold, we're going to get a swing. Okay. We got it. Okay, we got it. So uh, the US dollar definitely uh, a place to keep watching. As long as there's not going to be a deal here, there's going to be market stress. And I think that um, the US dollar is something that's going to respond. Of course, if the US dollar responds, it means the dollar pairs are going to respond. So we've also been taking a look at the Euro US dollar. Euro US dollar wasn't responding quite as much as I thought it would. Nevertheless, it did, it did catch. We didn't quite get that swing. We didn't get that, we didn't sit in that lower quintile, right? But nevertheless, we did get some movement there, okay? Um, and it was pushing in zone three. So those were, the dollar and the euro were really the um, standouts when we looked at it yesterday. The rest were sitting in zone two. They were starting to move on the hourly, but their, their daily hadn't uh, really shifted from zone two to zone one. So some of the others that we had looked at, was a cable. So let's just bring up the cable pairing. A cable actually moved uh, a heck of a lot. That was also because of the um, unemployment, uh, I beg your pardon, the claimant data that came out of the UK. So it came, the employment data came out a little weaker than expected. Uh, that added some pressure to cable. Uh, there was more of a swing here than on the euro. We did, we did point this out. Um, it did take it did take some time to work through the system. So we had a whipsaw here. These whipsaws are annoying as can be. But then what happened was the swing court. Okay, the swing court. Now, uh, just something that I need to point out here because it, it bears repeating. Uh, we're going to get whipsawed a lot. We've got, to, we've got to accept it. The idea here is that it's the swings that are going to make up for the whipsaws. It's the swings that are going to make up for the whipsaws. Um, we have looked at that previously um, in terms of a bell curve. I just want to show that to you guys very quickly, and then we'll move on to gold. Let's just uh, take a look at the bell curve just so uh, we understand the uh, statistics behind it. So the idea here is uh, your trades are going to be uh, put in a distribution. Uh, for this conversation, we'll call it a normal distribution. I would suggest it's probably going to have a slight negative distribution to it, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the idea here is most of your trades, 68% of them, are going to just be completely ordinary trades. Uh, you're not going to get away with that. Uh, no matter what your system is, uh, you, you're not going to beat the statistics. Um, and the more you trade, the more you're going to be subject to the uh, distribution. Uh, here's your whipsaws. That's your whipsaws, okay? But you'll get your swings, and your swings will push you to the to the right tail. So that's kind of what we're seeing here. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at uh, gold as well. Gold was sitting in zone two. Let's just see how it moved on that uh, debt ceiling because it's it's quite interesting. Um, it's very interesting. One would think that gold is the place of safety, okay? Gold really moves uh, in response to dollar movements. It's the dollar which is being viewed as uh, the safe haven at the moment. And um, as the dollar uh, moves, you can see that gold's moving in the opposite direction. That makes sense because uh, the US dollar is sitting on the denominator side. So as the denominator gets up, okay, gold must come down. And guess where it's pushed? It's just pushed into um, the 
zone three. So the fact that we've pushed it to zone three, I think, uh, puts it into the watch list. Um, and take a look at the momentum. The momentum has dropped now into the into the lower quintile. Now, I'm um, I'm optimistic that there is going to be a deal on this debt ceiling. It's unfathomable. It's unfathomable. Oh, I, can't, I can't even pronounce this. It's unfathomable that there is going to be a default on um, American debt obligations. The last time that happened was during the American Revolution, okay, uh, during the 17, I think that's the 1780s. It's not feasible it just doesn't seem feasible that uh, it's going to happen. Um, but the, they, they're pushing the, the boundaries here. Um, I think ultimately, if a deal is found, um, it does act as a headwind on the dollar. I think there is tailwinds for gold. But that's when the deal is struck. Until then, there's going to be a stress. And that stress um, is going to put uh, support behind the dollar. It's going to put pressure behind uh, behind gold, behind cable, behind the euro. Um, another another pairing that we looked at yesterday was the loony pairing. So let's just take a look at the loony pairing as well. And then I want to take a look at um, uh, at the DAX. OK, so uh, Again, loony pairing here, loony pairing here, it's in zone two. Um, I would have preferred it if it was in zone one. There is a, um, a long-tailed candle here. So uh, bears push down until they lost control at the, uh, the low for the day, and then uh, it's been pushed back up. So this is quite a, a bullish candle. Go through to the hourly here, and you can see we've got the cross. Okay, there's the cross. There's the crust. Where's our stochastic? It's sitting sitting in the uh, upper quintile. As long as it holds that upper quintile, there's going to be uh, a momentum behind it. Okay. So the idea here is uh, Looney uh, perhaps one to add to the watch list as well. All right. Uh, last chart, and then we're going to switch to the crypto minute. Uh, let's just take a look at the. Well, let's take a look at two. Let's take a look at uh, Nasdaq. We'll take a, take a look at DAX. Let's look at DAX first. Okay. Um, here's the DAX. I like this trend. Um, I, I say it all the time. Uh, higher trough followed by higher peak, followed by higher trough followed by higher peak. I like the RSR. The RSR is moving between um, uh, the 50 and the 80. So I like that as well. And um, I like the fact that there's a squeeze. I like the fact that there's a squeeze on these ninja bands here. Um, but I am uh, cognizant of the fact that I think the, the debt ceiling negotiations are going to put a squeeze here. And uh, that's unfortunate because the technicals are looking really good for an upside breakout, but I think the fundamentals here um, are acting as headwinds. So uh, just be aware that there's a squeeze um, just to be getting um, this buildup of pressure on the risk markets. I think there might be a, um, uh, a first leg. I think this is pure um, supposition, but I think there might be a first leg um, to the downside as the um, debt ceiling um, story uh, gains traction. And I think once it is solved, we get some movement up to the upside. Uh, that's subject to correction. So um, again, that's the uh, sort of forecast that I'm always telling you guys, don't forecast because it could get us into a whole lot of trouble. But I think uh, that makes a certain amount of sense uh, today. Um, all right, let us, uh, Zanetta just saying there's some uh, Euro news um, at 10 o'clock. 
Uh, yes, that's going to be the CPR final. I think that's what you're referring to. Um, the CPR is um, going to be car. Um, that's going to be interesting, Zanetta, how it plays out against the debt ceiling, uh, the debt ceiling uh, story, because they uh, are going to have um, they sort of heading in opposite directions. I think that the debt ceiling might uh, be the, the story to follow here. I'm going to tag on subject to correction. Um, but uh, yes, the CPI is something that uh, it's not going to be. Uh, the CPI is um, we've had the preliminary CPI before. It shouldn't be too much of a shock. So we'll get probably around 7% in terms of, um, uh, of CPI. Let's just take a look at NASDAQ which is very sensitive to rate movements and the fixed income market perhaps uh, showing more stress than the, uh, than the um, risk markets. Uh, this is interesting, NASDAQ staying supported. Okay, um, I would be careful here. I would be careful here. I, I, I really think that the, the market has ignored this debt ceiling. When I say the market, I'm talking about the risk market, the stock markets. I think that it's ignore, ignored it to a point where it can't ignore it for much longer. And we can see there's a crossover here. So just uh, bear in mind that um, it's a story that you guys have to keep on top of. All right. Um, that's the top of the hour. We're going to end here. Uh, we're going to go through to the uh, crypto minute. So thank you very much for joining me this morning. I want to thank, um, uh, I want to just say I appreciate you guys joining in. And of course, have a good day, a good evening ahead, and we shall chat uh, tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, guys.